Okay, we're going to be talking uh, about the next big update to Natural Earth, which if you don't know about it, it's a geodata uh, data set for making small scale maps. It's available for free. Um, it's sponsored by NASIS, and it's been developed by a team of volunteers, many of whom are in the audience here. So thank you very much for everyone who has worked on it. Anyway, we've been uh, busy at work on it, and uh, uh, last year we, we talked about what was happening. We are rebuilding the uh, data set from the ground up using the analogy of a house. The first thing we did is build a coastline, it's like a foundation, and then all of the other data coverages grew up from there. So last year we had coastlines and glaciers and ice, uh, ice uh, shelves uh, complete. I was busy working on uh, rivers and lakes at that time, um, and now we have a lot more stuff that's been uh, completed. What I'm going to do is just give a quick show and tell of what we have done, and then I'm going to turn over the uh, microphone to Nathaniel. So first up, rivers and lakes. Um, after uh, a 10-month slog, I'm happy to say that the, uh, the team has finished uh, the world. Here's the, uh, the full coverage of a, an area of the world that you should uh, be able to uh, recognize. Um, you know, one of the things that you'll see is that uh, there's tapering applied to the river, so all the river segments are segmented with uh, stroke weight attributes assigned to them, so if you want to apply a tapering effect, it's very easy um, to do. Yeah, ooh, isn't that nice? <laughs> um, also, there's scale rank attributes. So if you don't want to show the full coverage, as you see here, you could weed them out uh, systematically and show fewer rivers if, if, um, if you want. Now, one of the th cool things about the data set is um, if you're making a historical map, you see a lot of reservoirs there, and of course they did not exist uh, 300 years ago. So you could just turn off all the, uh, the reservoirs and there are the, uh, there are the rivers going through the reservoirs, the central lines. That's, uh, I think, pretty handy. Also, uh, uh, we took uh, great pains with the topology, the um, uh, admin boundaries, admin zero countries, and also state and province lines uh, align with rivers where they should and where they shouldn't, because sometimes rivers do not follow the uh, admin lines exactly. We're also very careful with name attributes. We have primary and secondary names uh, worldwide for the rivers. And that got a little bit tricky in some places. In uh, much of Latin America, river courses change names uh, every, every few miles as you go upstream. Here's an intermittent drainage that's relatively short in, in northern Mexico. And look, there's, there's eight uh, named sections of that river. We have them all in there if you want to name them all on your map. And don't ask me for advice how to go about naming this on an actual map. It, it, would, uh, it would challenge me. So staying on the sort of hydro um, theme, uh, we have all new bathymetry for natural earth. Uh, we took great pa uh, pains to get the, the generalization just right. Uh, the, the isobaths start at uh, 200 meter depth, which corresponds with the continental shelf, and then it goes down in 1,000 meter steps to the very deepest uh, trenches. And we have urban area uh, polygons. Uh, these were extracted from uh, MODIS 2021 uh, land cover data uh, and vectorized. Thanks, uh, Carl Churchill, for helping out with, with doing this. And they're also filtered a bit, as you, as you can see. Now, there's more than just the, uh, the, the vector data that we're working on. Uh, we've been working on raster data as well, where my heart lies. And uh, first up is uh, shade of relief. We're looking at the Tian Shan range in Central Asia right now. Uh, this was generated, can you guess what software was used? Edward, or I just call it Ed now. I use it so often. We're on familiar terms. So yeah, it's, uh, we were going for just a very, very clean look. 
all of the, uh, the raster coverages are um, at 40 arc second resolution. That's higher than the previous version, Natural Earth. That, that works out to rasters that are uh, 32,400 pixels wide. So lots of pixels jammed into the, uh, the coverages. This is the gray earth data set. It uses localized hypsometric tints uh, developed by none other than Daniel Huffman sitting up here in the front row. Thank you, Daniel. And uh, it, it combines the, the new shade relief and uh, localized hypsometric tints. This is the, uh, the light version. We also have a darker version. I know a lot of you like to have kind of glowy data on uh, dark backgrounds. So we have a dark version available so you could do these sorts of uh, maps. Next up is ocean bottom data. This is derived from uh, uh, the Blue Earth bathymetry data set. That's uh, something I created that's very cleaned up. You don't have all the, uh, the artifacts that you see, normally see on bathymetry uh, uh, data sets. There's two versions of this, a light and a dark. You're looking at the, uh, the light version with uh, shallower uh, water areas. Then we have cross-blended uh, hypsometric tints. Uh, you know, this version showing uh, the, uh, the central Andes um, uh, has all of the data on it. It has the hypsometric tints, it has the shade of relief, the, uh, the drainages and, and bathymetry, uh, you know, and we will be releasing this with all of those coverages separately or combined depending on what you might want to, um, to use. And then finally, for the raster data sets, uh, here is Natural Earth 2, which is a sort of a modified land cover data showing environmental zones on planet Earth. And again, this one has you know, all of the, you know, the, uh, the hydro added to it and, and shade relief and so forth, but it will come in with um, separate um, components. So that's what I've been uh, doing this uh, past year, and Nathaniel has been busy as well, and he's going to take over now. All right, thank you, Tom. So I'll talk about, well, some vector layers. Um, this is the version five populated places in natural earth. It's gone through several different iterations, but pretty close to the original. Um, at some point, we added a lot of uh, admin one uh, capitals, which changed the balance a little bit. Um, here, you know, this is, you know, the Ganges River Plain. There should be a lot of people here there are in real life, there's not very many cities in natural earth uh, in India, in China. So one thing we're trying to address in the new version is to globally balance the data um, and just be a little bit more inclusive. So there looks like there's a lot more places uh, in this view. Um, there's actually only 80% more. There's a lot more characters uh, with the labels displayed. Um, you know, so in India and China, um, like a pretty thorough rebuild of all these um, you know, cities. Uh, most other places, you might see a 10 or 20% increase, you know, similar to the increase in, in um, hydro uh, there. We're adjusting the lat longs, making sure they you know, fall more realistically <laughs> where they should. Uh, and that way, when you zoom in to another data set like OpenStreetMap, you're not going to see a jiggle uh, for where the, the position is. Um, Tom has uh, taken the admin zero lines from the State Department and generalized them to match up with the hydro. Uh, the work here is, you know, first to build the lines, and then we also need to build polygons. So one of the things I still need to do is, you know, crack those lines into polygons, fairly easy. You know, adding, uh, in this case, you can see with version five, you know, we have the color coding um, that we'll add back. Um, but we also need to add back all the different attributes that were originally on the data set. You know, the, the natural earth ID, um, the names, uh, a lot of these different crosswalks, including uh, name translations into what I think we have two dozen languages. And there's a lot of extra themes in terms of disputed territories, uh, all the controversy around those, um, you know, and, and map units and sovereignty uh, areas and such. Um, the 
interesting thing, I, I keep saying this at different nases, but um, trying to keep track of all the admin one in the world is uh, very, <laughs> it's never ending. Um, here in the US, there's 50 states plus some territories, and it doesn't change much. In almost every country around the world, that's not how it works. They change their admin one on a very regular basis. Um, so there's 4,000 something of these, and uh, there's a lot of churn. Um, in Nigeria, the number of admin one is actually the same uh, between this version and the last version. All the line work has shifted around to get more precise and follow that hydro. Um, so it will be easy to add those polygon attributes back. It's a lot more work in other countries where we have to say, like, hey, why is it off by one? Um, you know, figure out what those names are, add totally new properties and such. Um, uh, one of the le less downloaded uh, themes in Natural Earth is transportation, rail and, and uh, road, um, but there's been a lot of change in the world in the last 15 years, especially with high-speed rail in China and elsewhere. There's been thousands of kilometers of, of high-speed rail added, for instance. Um, so we'll be looking at this theme, um, kind of a stretch goal for version 6. Uh, and. Um, if you want to help uh, on any of the remaining tasks, we're still looking for volunteers. Um, we'll have a, kind of a birds of a feather session on Friday at 1045 in the NASIS Commons. Um, if you want to come and um, say, uh, hey, that, that column um, that has a very cryptic name uh, in your DBF table, um, please keep it. I use it to make my maps. Um, we're hoping to kind of reduce the maintenance burden of natural earth uh, and also just some of the confusion uh, around like, oh my gosh, like the, the line work looks great, but like all these columns, what are all these columns? Um, so um, uh, if you want to come and help out, uh, that'd be great. Um, we have lots of contributors of, that have uh, helped with version six, William, Kate, Brandon, Nat, Carl, Michael, Akira, Mark, Leo, Dolpreet, Heather, Mary, Alex, Saoshu, Corwin, Alex, Kurt, Bridget, Bernie, Daniel, and others, including your name here. Um, so please come uh, and find Tom and I. There's always more ways to help. Um, you know, the preliminary data for version 6 is available today at shadedrelief.com uh, slash any draft. Um, you know, thank you very much for your attention. I think maybe a little time for questions. Uh, Tom, you want to come back up here? <laughs> thank you. Okay, so this session, unlike most, is a little tight for time. So we will take one question. One winner. <laughs> Can you describe the tools you use to create the vector data? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, kind of unorthodox. I'm uh, using Adobe Illustrator and Map Publisher uh, primarily uh, for doing the digitizing. Um, I'm actually doing the digitizing with my index finger on the trackpad of my laptop, drawing um, Bezier curve lines, which I then convert to uh, a series of you know uh, nodes and arcs uh, between them for you know GIS um, data. Yeah. So you can output like shape files out of the map publisher. Oh, no, ab absolutely. That's oh, what makes it um, possible. It's it, it, it's a a pretty efficient way of creating data, and I'm not aware of anyone else uh, creating data with those tools. Awesome. Thank you. If anybody has questions for Nathaniel or Tom, you can ask on Slack, or you can pull them aside after the session. That might be the case with some of our presenters for the afternoon session. <laughs>